I think we'll start this out with an example. You the filter chain is you're going to have a pass. Oh, oh, you oh, grab by the function. Oh, yeah, right. We might be wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're funny, but not always a pass. This one is, this is a cool one. This cool one of what you say, a cool design type. This is my favorite of all the design types. Why? Because it is just inherently sexy. Um, I should probably say elegant, but whatever. Um, so I'll let you chew on that one for a while about why one might, des why one might describe a design as sexy. Uh, well, that's what happens when you're an experimental psychologist and you've been studying this stuff for way, way, way too long. Um, anyway, so no, and you're probably wondering, what is it? It's the multiple baseline. You could do multiple baselines across individuals. You could do multiple baselines across behaviors. You could do multiple baselines across conditions. Sex. So anyway, and not conditions. Ha ha. Um, so what is a multiple baseline? Whoosh, it's really cool. It's just an AB design repeated over and over again, right? Um, and remember that, and this is why I call them elegant because an AB design sucks, but an AB design stacked on top of an AB design stacked on top of another AB design. Now that's elegant. Why? Because out of all this garbage AB designs, you can now start to draw functional relations. Why? Because of the unique ability to overlap ability because of the unique requirement of overlapping your ba your second baseline and your third baseline into the intervention phase times that were above it. Okay, so you're going to look through here. We're going to look at one. Um, so the, the first one here is about interventions across individuals. All right. So we see that the baseline occurs and then the behavior starts to change accordingly. Um, and then we come down here and we say, I wonder what would happen if we did this with Bob now. The first one was with somebody else. Um, so now we're going to do it with Bob because whatever. Um, and so did Bob's behavior change at the exact time of the, uh, the phase change? Or give yourself a little bit of time there for your transition periods, right? So did, the, did Bob's behavior change during then? Or did it change when the first person's intervention started? If so, now we got a problem, right? Because if Bob's behavior is changing during baseline, that happens to match up with somebody else's intervention phase change. Now we have an issue. So again, then we repeat that logic again for the third person down here. Um, we'll call that person Tox. My buddy Tox, I haven't seen in 15 years. So anyway, so Tox down here, he's engaging in his behavior. And again, he's got his longer baseline, which is longer than Bob's baseline. And it's longer than the first person's baseline, as you can see. Um, and it allows us to make all those comparisons to the, 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 to the individuals above it. Then the next magical design type here that we have uh, would be an intervention across settings. So one person, multiple environments, multiple settings, same logic, everything applies. So we've got talks at home, we got talks at work, and we got talks on the dance floor. And I tell you, if we're trying to reduce swearing behavior, then I'm, then this is what we would do. So anyway, um, so multiple baseline, really cool. We can determine whether or not our intervention is having an effect. Um, you'll see some graying out areas in here uh, where we're talking about the, um, the prediction piece. We're talking about the verification pieces, and we're talking about the replication pieces. They're all built in, and that's what's so cool about the multiple baseline. And the third one um, is the multiple baseline across behaviors. So let's pick on Tox again. So Tox is engaging in, um, he's a series of problem behaviors because Tox is just being Tox, um, and he is swearing, and he's picking his nose, and he's, I don't know, rubbing himself inappropriately on the ear, all right? I, I don't know why that's inappropriate, but maybe it just looks funny. Um, so we've got those three behaviors. We have an intervention we think that's going to work for all of them based on other work that we've done with talks, and we've figured out that maybe non-contingent reinforcement might apply and uh, or might be a tool that we can use to reduce behavior across all these behaviors. So we do the intervention once, then we do it again, and then we do it a third time. And again, we're looking for that overlap. If things change when they shouldn't, that's a warning, right? Um, if things change when they should, now then you start to get that replication piece and you get the verification piece all built in. So um, again, multiple baselines, hands down for me. Um, they're one of the most, uh, um, like I said, elegant or sexy designs out there. I just think they're genuinely cool. I think the logic, what's cool about it for me is the fact that you take this really inherently weak design and you tweak it just a little bit. You do something else to it and it becomes a brilliant, beautiful design that has all sorts of validity to it. It's just cool. Um, so anyway, hopefully you get a chance to use one. Uh, they're really fun. And I guess, I don't know if a design can be fun. Um, so they're fun. They're, they're, the logic is really simple with them. Um, and you can really see the effects across the board. So anyway, thanks for letting me pick on your talks. Hopefully you're watching the video. Take care. That was a video on behavior analysis. If you like it, please share it. Please subscribe. Please donate.
we'd like to eat. I'm hungry.